Hi everyone! In the last video, we looked at the displacement reactions of group 7, the halogens. And from those displacement reactions, we worked out that the reactivity decreases going down group 7, or alternatively, you could say the reactivity of the halogens increases going up group 7. That's known as the reactivity trend of the halogens. So in this video, we're going to look at the halogen's electronic structures to be able to explain that reactivity trend. So let's be absolutely clear about the reactivity trend of the halogens. As you go towards the top of group 7, they become more reactive. And as they go towards the bottom of group 7, they become less reactive. And this is the exact opposite to the reactivity trend of group 1 alkali metals. If you need a reminder about that, I'll put a link up to that previous video here now. The first thing to note about the reactivity of the halogens is they are all very reactive non-metals. And we can explain this by looking at their electronic structures. So I've drawn the electronic structures of the first two, fluorine at the top of the group and chlorine underneath it. And we can see that they all only need to gain one more electron to get a full outer shell and be stable. And it's quite easy to find an extra electron rather than trying to find two or three more electrons. So that explains why the halogens are all very reactive. So as you go down group 7, the halogens become less reactive. And once again, we can explain that by thinking about their electronic structures. As you can see, the atoms are getting bigger as we go down the group from fluorine to chlorine. Or you could say they have more shells. It's important you don't just say more electrons in an exam question because technically they could have more electrons on a shell without the atoms getting bigger and having more shells. So the first point is to say the atoms are getting bigger. So that means the extra electron it's trying to gain is further from the nucleus. So there will be less attraction from the nucleus on that electron. We can also see there's more shielding from their inner shells because there's more inner shells. And that also means there will be less attraction from the nucleus on that extra electron it's trying to gain. So all of these factors mean that as you go down group 7, the halogens find it harder to gain that extra electron and therefore they become less reactive. For your exams, you are expected to know what the halogens actually look like in real life. So fluorine is a very pale yellow gas. Chlorine is a pale yellowy green gas. Bromine is a reddy brown liquid. And iodine is a grey solid that gives off a lovely purple vapour. It turns straight from a solid to a vapour and we call that process sublimation. Now you won't be asked about astatine because it's a very radioactive element, it's very unstable. In fact it's thought that there's probably less than 30 grams of it in the whole Earth's crust at any one time. So it's just the first four that you need to remember the appearance of. And as we go down there we can see that they're changing from gas to gas to liquid to a solid. So that's suggesting that the melting points and boiling points are increasing as we go down the group. So the other halogen trends, apart from reactivity, that I've just hinted at, is that as you go down group 7, they have higher melting points. They also have higher boiling points. And we can see from the mass numbers that the relative atomic masses are increasing from 19 to 35.5 and so on. So on your exam, you could be asked, why do the melting points and boiling points increase going down the group? So let's look at what the molecules are actually like. So we can see, first of all, that the halogens go round in pairs. They are what we call diatomic molecules, two atoms forming a molecule. And the really obvious thing as we go down the group from fluorine to chlorine is that the molecules are getting bigger. Now we also need to consider the forces between the molecules and we call those intermolecular forces. Inter means between, so between the molecule forces. And as we go down the group, these forces get stronger. We get stronger intermolecular forces. That means these forces take more energy to break them or to overcome them and that explains why we need a higher melting point to melt them or a higher boiling point to turn them into a gas.
So if you found the video useful, please give it a like and that will tell me that I need to make more videos like that. Thank you for watching.